One of the scariest things in game dev is a little word I like to call tryharding. It's when you're so desperate for success that you drive yourself crazy thinking about, working on, or even promoting your game or idea. And instead of working on something you're passionate about, you end up just being stressed and overworked with little to no work to show for it. You start only using software or making games in genres that are popular instead of something you really want to play. Heck, even I want to be cool like the snowman over here. But the worst part about tryharding is that you invest way too much time and energy in something that has no payoff. Instead, you end up with a lifeless game that nobody's interested in playing. Today I want to talk about Blizzard Blow at 64 and how I overcame the inner tryhard in me. And also how I had amazing success because of it. So bundle up, get ready, and let's get this snowball rolling. Our story begins on December 1st, 2020. My game development studio, Fear Earth, hosted its second annual Great Winter Game Jam. This is a fun, non-ranked game jam where we all get together and create winter games. It's something I look forward to every year because there's no pressure to create anything amazing. You just have fun and create something you're kind of feeling inspired by. And this year we thought it'd be fun if we didn't have any required mechanics. Instead, the only rule was to make sure that the game was winter or holiday themed. And for those that wanted to challenge themselves a little bit more, we did make an optional mechanic, which was risk and reward. So going into this jam, I was very excited to see what I could come up with and really make something unique and just a fun experience all around. Now, as some of you may know, I've been working on Dewdrop Dynasty for the past couple months or so. So this was the first time in a while that I was actually able to work on kind of a side project. But unlike the past side projects that I've worked on that never end, this one had a deadline, and that was December 21st. So with three full weeks of game dev, I thought I would try something a little ambitious and dabble in Godot's 3D. Now in the past I've used Unreal and Unity, and I never really liked how 3D worked and I always thought it was very confusing. So I was a little skeptical when picking up Godot's 3D engine. But to my surprise, it was incredible. It was intuitive, easy to use, and just downright beautiful. <laughs> and immediately I started playing around with mechanics that I could do for my winter game. And I thought back to a previous project that I never finished called Bubble Duckies. It's this weird downhill roller that's kind of inspired by Super Monkey Ball, and the goal is to knock off a bar of soap. I was always kind of sad that I never finished the project, and I thought, what if I try to recreate the same sort of gameplay, but this time I would make it more winter themed, and maybe you knock off a present instead of a bar of soap. So, filled with excitement, I started working through my game in Godot and tried to recreate everything that I made in Unity. Now let's back up for a minute and let me explain a little bit better what I mean by tryharding. First off, tryharding has nothing to do with motivation or determination. And instead of working hard on something you really care about, what you end up doing is you try to take these shortcuts. You think, if I make this type of game or if I use this type of software, that it'll be popular and that I'll make a bunch of money and everyone will love me. A prime example of this are all those mobile apps that just copy games like Flappy Bird. Instead of genuinely wanting to create a game that's inspired by Flappy Bird, these are cheap attempts to make money or find some sort of popularity. And it ends up just feeling weird. And the reason being is people love authenticity. And when someone's playing your game, they can actually feel that authenticity. Now here's the scary thing about tryharding, is a lot of the times you don't know you're doing it until after it's been done. So my number one tip for tryharding is work on games you're passionate about. Don't take shortcuts. If there's something you want to make, put in the time, put in the effort, and people will see that. The prime example I like to use is Eric Barone's story on how he created Stardew Valley. Instead of it being about this get rich quick scheme or trying to do something that was trendy, he just wanted to recreate a game that meant so much to him. And because of that, I think he was authentic and extremely successful because of it. So after working a week or two on Blizzard Blowout, I honestly just felt amazing. It felt so refreshing to work on a project that didn't have any pressure to be something. It just was a game that I wanted to create. And to be honest, the gameplay was so much fun, I just was having a blast designing the levels. But as the project started to wrap up, I was a little concerned that 
I don't know, maybe people wouldn't like the game, or maybe that there just would be no interest in it at all. The inner tryhard in me wanted me to add new features and things that were popular and trendy nowadays. But really, in my heart, all I wanted to do was just create a retro game, like something I would play as a kid and just love. So I decided just to create what I wanted to make, and if no one else liked it, who cares? So as the game jam wrapped up, I was really proud of what I created. I made a 3D game, it felt super polished, and it honestly felt like this wonderful wintry Nintendo 64 experience. So after publishing it on itch.io, I decided to just spend time with friends and family and totally forget about it. And little did I know that something amazing was about to happen. A couple days later when I looked at my itch.io page, I had a bunch of notifications and I was a little confused. I thought maybe someone commented on my game, maybe I got a follower, I wasn't really sure. But there were notifications for people buying my game. Not only that, but people were doing gameplay videos and speedruns of it. And it was just really surreal to see. Other than the insane difficulty of one of the levels, people seemed to really enjoy it and it just brought a smile on my face. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't the money that touched me, it was the fact that I wasn't even trying to do that and it just came organically. In the past, I've tried making games for profit and to be honest, it's difficult and I never really was that successful. So to do something I had a blast doing and just had fun and to see that other people loved it too and wanted to support it, it meant so much to me and I honestly just can't appreciate it enough. So for those of you that struggle from time to time being authentic with your games and not being a tryhard, just realize that there are people out there that love what you create and that you should make something because it inspires you and makes you happy. Game development is a hard business to be in and if your focus is always money and success, you're gonna just end up in a weird place. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to make money with your game. Heck, that's the dream. That's what we all want to do. But if that's what you want to happen, make sure you're doing it the right way. Make sure you're being authentic and make sure you're being true to yourself because that's ultimately the most important thing. Now, if you want to play Blizzard Blow at 64, there'll be a link in the description below. I believe the world record currently is four minutes and 30 something seconds. So I want to challenge you guys to see how fast you can beat it and make sure to submit your time in the comments down below. Also, if you like my channel and you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. You'll get the latest updates on live streams and my new videos, and maybe eventually some giveaways. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next week for another Game Dev Adventure. Peace out.